Hello everybody. Uh, so in this video, we're going to solve one last example about the um, uh, mass balance for reactive systems. And here we will have uh, a process that includes recycling and, and uh, purging. Um, and there will be one very, very helpful uh, or, or yeah, helpful trick that we, we, uh, we are going to see here. And this is one of the tricks that are very helpful in similar cases like this. Um, and we'll see we'll see this trick. But let's uh, just take a look up, uh, on the on the process. Here, this is a process for producing methanol from reaction of carbon dioxide and, and hydrogen. And uh, we have here the fresh feed contains hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and inerts. The inerts are 4.4 percent of the stream, and uh, of course, this is small percent. And uh, the um, uh, the feed to the reactor, uh, I mean the product of the reactor goes to a condenser, which is a separator that uh, condenses all of methanol and water and all of them. So uh, there is no methanol and water in the top stream and the top uh, product stream contains all the hydrogen, carbon dioxide and inerts. And uh, this stream is uh, recycled, but uh, it contains some inerts. And to avoid the accumulation of the inerts in the recycle stream, the uh, part of it is purged and the rest is recycled to the mixer. Uh, we know that the feed to the reactor contains 70% hydrogen, 28% carbon dioxide, and the rest is inerts. And we know that the single pass conversion of hydrogen is 70%, uh, 60%. And we want to calculate all the flow rates and the compositions of all the streams in order to uh, produce 155 kilomoles per hour of methanol, of pure methanol. Um, so this is the, uh, the problem statement. And to start, as we do all the time, uh, we, we have to do the um, degrees of freedom calcula analysis, analysis uh, calculation. So uh, for the degrees of freedom analysis, we have um, the mixer. For the mixer, we have uh, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine variables. Uh, we have three given variables, two compositions here and one here. We have uh, three equations. We have no additional relation, so it is uh, its degrees of freedom is three. For the reactor, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight components and one extent of reaction. So this is the extent of reaction method. So it's um, eight plus one, which is nine variables. Uh, we have two given variables. We have uh, five equations for the five components and one additional relation, which is the conversion. So the degrees of freedom is one. If you want to do this uh, degrees of freedom uh, calculations for the reactor using the atomic balance method, uh, the difference would be in the number of variables and the number of equations. In this case, the number of variables will, will not include this, this extent. So it's going to be only eight. And the number of equations that we have are going to be four. We have hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and inerts. So we have four, four equations. So it's eight minus four or nine minus five, which is going to produce the same output at the end, uh, which is the degrees of freedom equals one. For the separator, we have five components, three and two, so it's 10 variables. We know um, one uh, given variable here, which is the number of moles of um, uh, methanol in the product. Uh, we have five equations and no additional relations. So this is four. For the splitter, there are three streams times three components, so it's nine components, nine variables. The number of given variables is um, zero. We don't have any given variables here. We have um, three equations, and the additional relation is the splitter restriction, which is three minus one times two minus one, which is two. So the degrees of freedom is four, and for the overall, we have three three and two so this is eight and also the reactor is part of the overall loop so uh, with the uh, extent of reaction method it's going to be eight plus one we have one two given variables we have five equations and no additional relations so the degrees of freedom is two so what we see here is that no uh, unit is solvable with the given information and we can also notice here that uh, or you might think that you, you can assume uh, any any number in any of the streams uh, but this is this is not something you can decide with the given uh, information that we have and having all the the, 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 the units uh, having degrees of freedom 
uh, more than zero doesn't mean that you have to assume something. In order to do this, um, and I, I suggest you uh, you check the Excel um, series. There was a video that I discussed this in details. There is one extra column that we add here. It's called process. We calculate the uh, all the variables in the process we calculate all the or, or we count all the given variables all the equations and all the additional relations and based on this we can calculate the process degrees of freedom if the process is zero then it's solvable even if none of the units have uh, has has zero degrees of freedom so this is something you can check in in details later and it's very easy it's it's just one more step in the in the column in the in the table of the degrees of freedom so it's not be it's not going to be uh, like um, a lot of a lot of new information to um, to know it's, it's just not part of the syllabus so i i don't cover it here uh, but it's there anyways if you're interested you can you can check it but anyways from from this process column if you put the or calculate the degrees of freedom of the process it's zero so i cannot uh, i cannot uh, assume anything uh, and now there are some strategies that we can follow to do the calculations one of them is what we are going to do now um, and the, the this strategy strategy is very helpful and very easy and it depends on your understanding of the numbers in this table so uh, let's assume just for the sake of assumption that this number is not given so uh, if we don't know the the flow rate of uh, methanol in the product stream then the, the the process is missing one information and let's say that we 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 want to solve the, the problem without this number and we want to assume a value uh, a flow rate because there is no given flow rates now if this number is not given then we can uh, we can say that the, the the there is no flow rate so we have to assume a flow rate uh, as we agreed before so uh, if you want to assume a flow rate then you would look at the table and you would definitely say that the flow rate that you will assume is in the reactor uh, either in stream 2 or in stream 3 and it makes much much more sense to assume it in stream 2 because it will define the whole stream um, and this way you can solve the reactor and then we can solve the separator and then we can partially solve the splitter and then uh, solve the mixer and then go back to complete the splitter solution so it's it's going to be solvable with with uh, this information so what we are going to do is what i just said that we will uh, do what we call the relocation of bases so we will uh, assume that this number is not a given variable for now for now we will we'll come back to it later but we'll assume that this is not a given variable and that the given flow rate is in the place that will make the process solvable in a straightforward way so this is uh, uh, where i'm going to relocate and it's this is what it means relocation of bases i'm going to put the bases somewhere else so i'm going to put the bases here and uh, based on this number uh, we can uh, update the degrees of freedom table so now this this uh, flow rate is going to be uh, uh, removed from the separator and from the overall uh, degrees of freedom as given variables and will be added to the mixer and the reactor so the mixer will have two degrees of freedom the reactor will have zero degrees of freedom which is very good news or this is what I, I was planning for and then the separator uh, is going to be five uh, instead of one and the overall is going to be three instead of two and uh, now we can we can start so the coming steps are going to be very very easy regarding the solution um, so i'm not going to spend a lot of time through the uh, to go through the the solution steps we will we know we are going to start with the reactor solving the reactor means that we calculate stream number three um, uh, stream number three is going to uh, add five information to the separator so separator is solvable we calculate stream four and stream seven S stream four we know the compositions in stream four now which are the same compositions in stream five and six so the compositions in stream five are two Im extra information added to the mixer so we can solve the mixer and by solving the mixer we calculate the flow rate of stream five which we can use to calculate the flow rate of stream six so it's solvable it's solvable in a straightforward way uh, and uh, now we will we, we will we will see later what we will get so so before this there might be a question that you would ask which is uh, 
okay, so with this strategy, I'm going to calculate everything as, as I need. But this was, is not going to produce the 155 kilomoles per hour. So w where is the solution? So this is a very va valid point. And actually, this is uh, very expected. And I, I don't expect that I would assume a random number in stream number two. And I would be so, so lucky that this number is the exact number that will give me the desired flow rate in the product stream. This is not expected. But what I will do is I will solve everything and then we will see later how we can go from the solution to the, the, the actual flow rate that we, we need. So we will start with the reactor. It's, it's very easy. We'll start with the, uh, with the fractional conversion and we know that 70 moles are going in and the conversion is 60%. So 60% of them are, are consumed. So the rest is 40%, which is 28 kilomoles per hour. Very straightforward, very easy. Now I can write the balance equation on hydrogen, which will give me the um, extent of reaction because I know the number of moles of hydrogen in and out. So uh, by applying this to the equation, the out equals in plus the extent of reaction multiplied by the coefficient. Now the um, the coefficient is or the the extent of reaction is 14. Now, as as I said before, you know the extent of reaction you know everything. So with the extent of reaction, we can do mole balance on carbon dioxide. Now we can calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide in the product, which is 28 minus 14, which is 14. Uh, the same for uh, water, it is zero plus uh, 14, so it's 14. Um, now for the uh, methanol, it's zero plus 14, it's 14. For the inerts, it's in equals out, which is two. So the, the, the reactor is very, very straightforward. And I, I, with the, this is the one of the beautiful things about the extent of reaction. If you know the extent of reaction, you know everything. So the problem is solved. No, no need to, to do any, any um, like long calculations. Now we uh, add five information to the separator. Separator is solvable. The separator is very easy in this case. It's exactly why just looking at the streams, you can know that this 28 is here, this 14 is here, and this 2 is here. These two 14s are in the bottom stream. This is as simple as this because we have perfect separation in this case. So now we have uh, the, the stream 4 calculated, stream 7 calculated, and stream 4 uh, gives us two information to stream 6 and stream 5, which is the splitter restriction. Um, um, the, the, the splitter is not solved yet, but we can use this information to solve the mixer. We add two information to the mixer, so the mixer is zero, and based on this, we can write the balance equations on the mixer. We can write the balance on I. So I in five plus I in one equals I in two. So uh, it's going to be a function of N1 and N5. We have the same for hydrogen, um, the the uh, number of hydrogen, or we can to do the total balance. It's 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 going to be also one, one other option. So the number of moles of hydrogen in one and two uh, plus two equals uh, number of, uh, plus five equals number of hydrogen two. Well, I, sh I should I should have wrote the total balance. It would it would be uh, easier. And I, I, I did this as three equations in three unknowns. Uh, y hydrogen, <coughs> N1 and N5, um, and N1 and N5, N1 and N5 and Y hydrogen. So this is three equations and three unknowns. If you solve it as two equations and two unknowns, you can put total balance. It's going to be much easier. Anyway, so this is what you, you're going to get. They're, they're going to produce the same things. We calculated stream uh, one flow rate, stream two flow rate, uh, stream five flow rate, uh, and we can calculate stream six flow rate from um, the uh, now we know the flow rates in stream one, the flow rates in stream five, and we can calculate flow rates of stream six by solving the splitter. So now we we calculated everything, and again the solution is not difficult. It just depends on um, uh, the information that you have, and then it's writing the equation and solving everything. So it's it's nothing difficult here. But now comes the uh, answer to the question. Now this flow sheet is 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 totally solved. Uh, but we are not getting the product that we were uh, we were aiming for. We don't have this 14 kilomoles per hour. And the answer is uh, something that we discussed in the beginning of this part of the chapter, which is um, what we call scaling up. And we said that scaling up is something that we can do to a flow sheet, uh, which is multiplying all the flow rates by a factor. Uh, this affects the, only the flow rates. The compositions are not affected. and uh, we don't need to recalculate or, or redo the mass balance calculations. They are already done and the mass balance is going to be fine. 
because we multiply everything by a factor so mass balance is not affected still in equals out and still everything is the same so uh, based on this we the factor that we will multiply uh, the flow rates by is the factor that will convert this 14 into 155 which is 155 over 14 very very simple so if we multiply all the flow rates by this um, by this factor we are going to get <coughs> the uh, desired product flow rate which is 155 kilomoles per hour and we have all the flow rates uh, and compositions calculated without recalculating anything again it's just multiplying by a factor and of course the extent of reaction is also multiplied by the same factor so um, this is uh, this is one very useful trick there are other useful tricks that we can um, we can uh, use to do mass balance for such cases uh, one of them is co called the, the iterative solution or tearing and it, I, I also discussed this in details in Excel uh, series. So it might be useful if you are interested uh, because it's not always uh, uh, a possible solution to do the relocation of bases. Sometimes the, the, the number of, of variables of the reactor is more than one. So in this case relocation of bases is not going to help. Uh, or if, if the flow rate is given at the unit with the minimum degrees of freedom. So, um, this is not going to help to, to move the, the uh, basis to uh, somewhere else. But anyways, this is the, um, the solution that we, we have and I hope the, the relocation of basis is, is, uh, is clear now. Uh, the next video we are going to start with the last part of this chapter which is the, um, the, the combustion. It's, it's part of the, uh, the, the um, uh, balance on reactive systems but this is a special reaction so we'll we will know um, some information about combustion which are mainly not new information but uh, we're going to use them to do the balance on uh, combustion units and uh, by the end of combustion we are going to be done by the um, the uh, this chapter we will end this chapter and we will be done by all what we want to cover in mass balance um, in this chapter in the textbook so um, um, I'll see you next time inshallah so, goodbye.